see if it doesn't get much bigger, does it, in the place in the Scottish Cup final? Yeah, it'd be a massive achievement for us. Um, if we were able to overcome Aberdeen, but you know we were well aware what a tough game it's going to be. You know they'll be thinking the same as us, um, but it, it certainly gives us a great incentive. As well as that, for yourself personally, to make two cup finals in the one season that would be a, a good achievement. Yeah, it's you know as I say and I've said it numerous times, my objective was to stay in the league. Everything else is a, a massive bonus, and we've been lucky enough that we've we've had one cup run that we were unfortunate in in the final. And, and giving herself a great opportunity to get to another final. So it's, you know, what can be a relatively good season could turn into be an, an incredible season, but, you know, we've really got an opportunity to do that. What have you, you made of Aberdeen? I know they came to far, 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 sorry, plus two, no, it's going to be a, a tough afternoon. It is, yeah. You know, we've, we've played them four times. We've won two, they've won two. Um, and they've won the games for the same reasons we won them, you know, and we've, we've identified what we didn't do in the two games. And, and I'm sure they've done the same. So there's not a lot between the two teams. You know, Derek's put a, a very competitive squad together there. You know, their, their league position tells you that. And, and we're well aware that we'll have to be on the top of our game. If we're not, the result that happened, you know, last week will, will happen again. But if we produce the performances that we have done away at Pataudry and in the, the earlier cup game, then we've got a great chance. Carl McHugh will get a big blow. Aberdeen have got a few players out as well. How big of a will that on the, the semi-final? I think it probably evens itself up a little bit. You know, um, people have said Carl's out, obviously, um, but Craig Tanner's out and Peter Hartley. You know, three big players for us. We've started to get a few boys back into training this week, so it, it does give me a few more options than, than last Saturday. But, you know, yeah, the, the players that are missing from both sides are boys that start in both teams. So what it does is huge opportunities for other people to step up and, uh, and stand up and, and maybe make a name for themselves. The big, uh impact does you know the disappointment of the league cup final does, does that come into play here at all as, in a, as a motivating factor I'm not sure what what it does is and I've said it previously the the feeling we got when we beat Rangers in the semi at Hamden um, you know, and the feel good around the place and the real positivity, that, that's what we want to feel at the end of the day. You know, everyone's talking about trips to Hamden. Um, trips to Hamden are only enjoyable when you win, otherwise, it, it becomes a, a very long day. And we know the feeling of both. We've lost at Hamden and we've won at Hamden in the semi. And, you know, we, we know which one we prefer. Going back to those two trips to Hamden, you also put together a pretty young squad here. Were you impressed with the way they handled the whole occasion, you know, the pressure, the profile as well, does that give you confidence going into this game as well? Yeah, um, I think, uh, you know, as, as you said earlier, it'll, it'll help them. We have got a very young squad, you know, a really young squad and, you know, inexperienced, not a lot of league games between them. Uh, and that, that experience of the League Cup run, getting to Hamden, you know, and, and being there in front of big crowds and under pressure, they handled it really, really well, you know, and on another day you come out with something. So I think that'll stand them in good stead. Aberdeen have been there quite a few times as well, so I don't think it gives us any kind of advantage. But it certainly settles our younger players down, and I think the feeling around here now is we really want to go and enjoy the day. I scribbled down a question uh, earlier. I said this is a, a game that could turn a good season into a great season, but you topped that by saying it could turn it into an, an incredible season. That just shows how important this game, this game is. Yeah, you know... Um, I've used the comparison to, to some of our players. You know, Northern Ireland hadn't qualified for any major tournament since 1986. And, and all everybody spoke about was the previous players and what they had done, and rightly so. But um, once we qualified for the Euros, you know, all of a sudden them boys became heroes. And it, you'll know, be remembered in folklore. And the Motherwell boys have got the same opportunity. And to get the Scottish Cup final, you know, obviously we have to overcome Aberdeen, but that is the huge incentive. That 27 years since the, the last cup win that you mentioned, uh, is that something that you would definitely use as a motivating factor and, and that chance to make themselves heroes? Yeah, it, you know, it, it has to be. Uh, the motivation for our boys, um, they're, they're honest players uh, in training. I've got to hold them back. You know, this week is... Has been you know it's been the intensity has been incredible. So it's it's me trying to manage it, not the boys saving themselves for anything. So you know the incentives that we speak about, they're they're very driven. They're they're a bunch of players who maybe haven't quite succeeded at previous clubs or young boys coming through the ranks with a real desire and you know Motherwell through and through. So we've got a bunch of boys where I don't think they actually need too much motivation to go and prove themselves. But as you say, that is an added incentive. How much will two trips already to Hamden? make uh, for your side because they'll know how to handle the atmosphere, they'll know the expectation. Is that a positive thing for you having been there twice already? It is, yeah, because the, the first time we went, you know, it was a new experience. 
we've got boys from non-league football and League Two who play in front of 1,500 people for you know the early stages of their career. All of a sudden, there's 60,000 at Hamden. Um, you know, the press going crazy in the papers and they're reading about themselves probably for the first time on, on that level. So that's settled them. They've been there. They've done that. They know the feeling of not getting a result there and they know the feeling of getting a result and you know we're determined to make sure we come away on Saturday with a result. Just looking at your results against Aberdeen this season, they've been slightly topsy-turvy in that you've, you've traded, as you say, 50-50 in, in wins. What is it about that particular team when you play them that makes it such an all-or-nothing scenario? I, I think Aberdeen are a dark thumb extremely good job up there uh, and Tony Dock they they can mix it up you know they're a big strong physical team but they also got players that can play and you know I think both the, the all four of the games it's been the team that's won the physical battle at times um, and then had the composure when to play and when not to and it's a it's a game that whoever takes their chances you know uh, the game we won 3-0 we weren't that much better than we were in the, the game we lost but we took our chances at the right times and, and goals change games just quickly stepping away, just looking at the, the league split fixtures, what have you made of those fixtures and also what did you make of the delay in them coming out given that we've known for a while who would be in the top and, and bottom six? To be honest, I've just concentrated on Motherwell. Um, we're not in the top six, unfortunately. Um, you know, so I've just waited for our fixtures and we have concentrated very much on this game, the semi-final. Um, we haven't been too much distracted with it. I'll, I'll let other people have their opinions on that. You spoke to Curtis uh, earlier, Stephen. It's a big, another big chance for him to show what he can do in the semi-final. Yeah, Mano's come up and you sign players sometimes it takes them a wee while and we've had players they got words it's maybe taken them a little while to settle and I believe they'll come really good next season um, Curtis has hit the ground running you know he's been a revelation for us he's he's a name on everybody's lips in Scottish football at the minute you know what a good signing he is and he's a determined boy he really is you know he reminds me of Louis Malt they're, they're both very confident both real belief in themselves and you know I think it's a real stage that Curtis will enjoy. And I read, I'd been reading uh, yesterday that you had been tracking him for a while and tried to sign him previously, so you've obviously been aware of his uh, abilities and his potential. Yeah, he'd, he'd been in loan at Oldham before I actually got there. Um, we tried getting him back again when I went there. You know, we'd, we'd went to watch him a few times. Um, he'd had his first year of injury problems and, and wasn't a regular in, in the team. So, um, yeah, I tried a couple of times to get him and, you know, obviously third time lucky and we're, we're delighted to have him. Mentioned a few options back. The, the three players that missed there last weekend, did they all get a chance? Nadia, Al Campbell, and Charles Dunn. I'm glad you reminded me who the three were. I was my mind had gone blank there. Um, yeah, they are. Um, Charles will be a, a, a late shout. He'll, he'll join in training today. Um, Alan's trained, so we're confident Alan will have no reaction to it. And Nadia trained yesterday for the first time. So, um, yeah, they, they've all got a real chance of being involved. Obviously, the boys that come in done themselves no harm whatsoever. And it leaves me with some difficult decisions. So when you look back to that 91-1 and you see what it did for the town and the celebrations and whatnot, you know this is a town that really gets behind the football club and when they do do well, it lifts everyone, not just the club but the whole town. Yeah, I, th I think our last cup run, you've seen that. You know the atmosphere around the place. It, this is a, a town that suffered a lot of un unemployment and you know and over the years and people class this football club as their life at times. You know and you speak to people around the place and I, I'm I'm well aware how much it means to people. And to, to give the town a lift and the people a lift and, and the people that work in this this football club that, that do absolutely everything to make it work. The, the players don't see that. They don't see the R's behind it. They don't see you know what the kit man does, what the, the cleaning ladies do. They don't see the chefs. They don't see that. They just get everything done for them. Um, and we're a group of people that try and make them appreciate that there. And to give something back would be fantastic. Is that of these games expected to be close? Uh, possibility of extra time and penalties? Have you been... Doing any extra practice in the penalty front, just in case? Um, I think on the day you can practice all you want. You know, <laughs> having that experience of being to the Euros and seeing people rifle it in the top corners and things, it, it doesn't always work when you've got a crowd there and the, the pressure's on. I think you, you know, we'll be well aware who we want to take the penalties. It just depends who is on the pitch at that stage and, and who's feeling confident. And just going away from the semi final for a minute, is there any more love than Cedric Keepreys? Your contract? Yeah, um, we're in negotiations with, with four players at the minute um, and we hope to have some announcements later on in the week.